Welcome back. You're watching HFO TV. HFO TV is co sponsored by the construction, repair, and restoration firm J.R. Johnson, the real estate law firm Baljanic LLP, the tax deferral accommodator Butler Exchange Group, the mortgage banking firm Gantry Incorporated, and forensic building consultants providing building structural science services. Welcome back to HFO TV. I'm Greg Frick, partner at HFO Investment Real Estate. And today we're lucky to have with us Blake Herring, principal at Gantry Inc. Uh, for people that, you know, I've known you for 25 years, but for people who don't know, Gantry, the name is new to the market. You've been around for a long time. Maybe explain a little bit about Gantry and kind of what their services are and, and kind of who they represent. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thanks for having me. Um, First of all, we're an intermediary, so okay. so we um, we represent capital sources generally that are outside of the market. Got it. And we provide programs to the market that may, many investors may or may not know a lot about. Our primary capital source is life insurance companies, uh, and the distinction between a life company and a bank number one is generally we're non-recourse, meaning the borrower is not uh, taking on a contingent liability with right. their loans, okay. so they're not personally guaranteeing it. Um, Number two, um, we're oftentimes um, able to negotiate an, an application document that ultimately becomes the commitment. So you're really just negotiating one document. Okay. Um, versus, uh, let's say, the agencies, uh, we rarely have reserves, and we more often than not lock our interest rate right at application. So you're able to lock on an application as opposed to an agency where you're floating up to, you know, right up to close. Exactly. And okay. a couple of things to point out with that. Number one, that's important in a rising interest rate environment where you can lock in the rate right now. Right. Even while you're in a purchase negotiation, you're not worried about where the rate might be going. Well, it kind of takes that uncertainty out. It right. does. And I will point out that you put up a 2% deposit typically with that, but the lender will refund that back to the borrower in the event on an acquisition, it doesn't go through. Okay. So Got an it. event outside the borrower's control, they'll refund the money. Got it. Um, so that's important. The other thing is we can actually lock an interest rate on a refinance up to say six, nine, or even 12 months. So again, in a rising interest rate environment, that's a really strong competitive So as a borrower's got a loan that's coming due, they can you know, play the game of try to lock that in ahead of time, take that risk factor out, and then wait for, for their prepay to go away or their, the ability to pay that off. Exactly. Okay. As we sit here today, it appears we're in a rising interest rate yes. environment. The rates have come up 20 basis points in the last few weeks. It seems that that's a trend. If you've got a loan maturing in December, January, or into June of next year, we can lock a rate now okay. and allow the borrower to play it out and ultimately just take out their debt. What's the life company's feel on multifamily? That's, you know, 90% of our audience. What's, I mean, what is their take on multi the multifamily market, specifically Oregon and Washington? They love it. Okay. It's the number one property type right there with industrial. They can't get enough of it. Okay. Um, and so their allocation generally per year is going to be at least 25, if not as much as 35 or 40% towards multifamily. Gotcha. So strong appetite. And what other kind of debt sources? We've done a lot of transactions lately with some debt funds, just you know, some acquisition rehab. What's kind of what's out there and what do you guys provide for those kind of sources? Yeah, there's a variety of different types of sources out there. Obviously, agencies are the, the largest right. and we team up with Walker Dunlop on our agency business. Okay. Um, and that's Freddie, Freddie Fanny and HUD. Um, they're known for maybe a higher level of leverage, yes. uh, generally speaking, and they also offer maybe more I.O. Uh, life insurance companies will offer some, but typically not as much I.O. or as much leverage, generally speaking. Debt funds offer the most leverage, but they're offering that leverage in order to get yield, so your interest rate's going to be higher, well, that, right. and so there's going to be more structure to a loan like that. Um, and then kind of in between is going to be um, you know, credit unions and banks, uh, all of which we keep as viable options on the table. Um, but again, because we can offer many of these other features without giving away rate or terms, okay. oftentimes our borrowers, once they understand the differences, lean more towards the life insurance company. So for a borrower, so to speak, that has a loan coming up or thinking about doing a purchase, they come to you and the benefit is that you know, they're, you're not just into one kind of loan type, it's they get the full gamut and kind of whatever meets their goals or you know whatever's in place, you can kind of help walk them through that? Exactly. It's all about tailoring the debt to the borrowers, their needs. Okay. What, what do they want? What's the priority for them? It's not always for every borrower, maximum dollars at the best rate. Right. There are a lot of other variables to consider and there's a lot of trade-offs to get either of those variables. What are they and what makes the most sense? And you've been doing this for a long time. I mean, you guys have a lot of experience and depth in this market. 
you know, credit unions, we hear they kind of come in and they come out. Is it kind of, is that your sense too, in terms of they get active for a while? It just depends. For sure. Yeah. For sure. They're not as steady and, and reliable, but at times they are definitely the most competitive, you right. know, for a given, for a given request. Um, I personally don't do a ton of it necessarily, um, but there are times when it does make the most sense. And then I know one question we'll get a lot of times with some clients is, you know, why do I want to go to a, you know, a mortgage broker yeah. or somebody like that as opposed to going to a bank directly? Maybe you can highlight some of the benefits, you know, the services that you guys provide for a borrower coming in uh, in regards to that. Yeah, I'd say probably the biggest thing, and, and you alluded to it from the beginning of the question, I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years. Right. So there's relationships with these lenders that go back many, many years. And over that time, they get to know our market, they get to know the nuances, we get to know each other. There's a level of trust that's established. Okay. A buyer or borrower coming to me gets to leverage that relationship. Okay. Um, you know, at banks, we all know there's turnover, right? I mean, it doesn't matter where in the chain the turnover might occur, that can disrupt the entire process for a bank. And more often than not, or, or very often we see that, okay. where a borrower will come to us and go, God, I've got this relationship with this bank, but all of a sudden someone in the chain of command left or something got altered. Now all of a sudden I'm not treated the same and I don't get the same program. With our life insurance companies, again, having a variety with a lot of relationships and a lot of history, we can bring a lot of different and you've options. got different options. You can. That's what I always tell people. Yeah, you can go to the bank, but it's you know it's that product. If yes. it's you know, are they really you know, are you getting something tailored to what your needs are? And if you really, the other thing too is a lot of people really haven't really sat down and gone through. I mean, what is most important? You know, what are the pitfalls? If we do this rate and term, do we know about the you know the prepay or you know whatever it may be? And sometimes I think they they get lost a little bit in terms of oh I'm you just want to stick here. Well, there's other options out there. And, yes, you know I. And, and really, at the end of the day, my business is all about risk mitigation, right. both for the bar and the lender. How do we find the best fit for the two? Gotcha. How do you come up with creative structures to avoid? Lenders are generally risk averse, right? right? They look backwards and 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 they don't they, they don't benefit from the upside of a property. A buyer or borrower is generally upside focused, exactly. right? So finding the middle ground where those two disparate can both get a goal that they're, yes. Can meet in the middle and find what works best for both. Good, okay. Well, for people who want to know more about the firm, go to the website below. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Blake, for taking the time to kind of introduce us to, to Gantry. Again, you've been in the market for 30 years, but uh, the name is new, but the products are similar. But as I we say to a lot of borrowers, there's many options, especially in multifamily, especially in multifamily, there's many different options. Ton. It's a, you know, the kind of the darling of the investment real estate world. So, you know, don't get pigeonholed into one, you know, product or something like that. See what's available see what can best you know, meet your needs and your goals. So thank you That's again right. for doing this. Absolutely. All right, Thanks thank for having you. me. We'll see you next time on HFO TV. Our entire office specializes in multifamily real estate, making HFO the largest multifamily brokerage in the Pacific Northwest. Your success is our passion. Build your legacy with HFO. Call 503-241-5541 or visit our website at hfore.com for more information.